This video is sponsored by Fox 3 Managed Solutions. Use the coupon code above to get 10% off your subscription. All right, so this video is going to be for those of you who are new, who don't know much about DCS, if anything at all. You saw a couple videos on YouTube, maybe a couple of mine, and you're interested. You want to try it out and see what it's all about, see if it's something that you'll enjoy. So in this video, I'm going to walk you through how to set up DCS, how to get it installed, how to configure it the way you want, and how to start flying. So first things first, you're going to go to digitalcombatsimulator.com. And once you're here, you want to click login up here at the top. You're not gonna, if you don't have an account, create an account by clicking register and it'll take you to this page. Once you're here, just fill out this form and register your account. Now this is important. You will need to have an account with Eagle Dynamics on the DCS website so that you can sign into the application. This is how they keep track of your modules, which modules you've purchased, what maps you've purchased, all that kind of stuff. So you're gonna need an account definitely register and create that account. Once you have it, you can download DCS by going to downloads DCS World, and then click download for DCS World 2.9. Now my own personal opinion, I would recommend using the standalone client. If you want to, you can get it on Steam. I know that some of you out there are in different countries and the exchange rate is pretty crappy or it's very volatile and Steam makes things a lot easier for you. You get more purchasing options uh, as far as currencies and things like that. But if that is not the case for you, you're in the US or somewhere where that's not a problem, then I would highly recommend that you use the standalone client from Eagle Dynamics and not get it from Steam. If you're gonna run a server of your own you can download it here but in this video we're not going to be going over that this is for new users that are just trying to play DCS by themselves or on multiplayer so click download here and you're gonna see here the minimum and recommended system requirements as well as the VR system requirements if you're gonna be using VR in uh, DCS click download once you have this you can click this folder here and that'll take you to your downloads folder just double click on the installer and that'll launch the installer Pick your language and then click OK. If you want to read the uh, EULA, you can. Select I accept the agreement and click Next. Next. Pick the place you want it to go. Click Next. Keep these two boxes checked. These are the two free maps that come with DCS, the Caucasus terrain and the Mariana Islands. Just click Next and Next again. And if you want a shortcut, keep that checked. Click Next and Install. Make sure that the start download checkbox is checked and click finish. From here, the updater is going to automatically launch and it's going to give you the option to start installing DCS. Just click proceed. And there you go. Go get some lunch, grab a soda and just hang out till this is done. It's going to take a while. And we're done. Now you'll notice you have two shortcuts on your desktop, DCS World and DCS World MT. DCS World is actually legacy, and I think Single Thread has been officially removed from the sim now, but uh, what it used to be is this was Single Thread, this was Multi-Thread. The new DCS standard is Multi-Thread, so this is what you're gonna be launching um, every single time. So I'm gonna go ahead and drag this one up into the recycle bin. And we're gonna use multi-thread only. We don't need single thread. This is what I recommend, especially nowadays. Basically every CPU out there has tons of cores. I've seen better performance with the multi-thread. I know some people have not. I think it has to do with your CPU or in your system and how your system is configured. But overall, the majority, as far as from what I've heard and from what I've experienced, multi-thread is better. So we're gonna go with multi-thread and I'm just getting rid of the single thread shortcut. Does not mean it's gone. I just got rid of the shortcut. It's still there if, if, if they even have it. I know soon it will be legacy and single thread will no longer be a part of the sim at all. So now that we have it installed, we're gonna go ahead and launch DCS multi-thread. Double click on that. All right, and now we have the launcher. Now this is where you're gonna put in that username and password that you created during your registration earlier. All right, and once you're logged in, you'll see your username here at the top right. If you hover your mouse over here on the left, 
you can click these different options. Try and buy is the store where you can buy modules or you can try them out for free for 14 days. If you go to files, you'll see all the files you have currently installed and available. You can see I've bought a lot in my time. And you can just select the box next to each of the modules that you want. You select all or you can just select which ones you want and then click install. I'm gonna keep all of these deselected because we're gonna play this as if we are a brand new user. So installed currently, all we have is the Caucasus map, the Marianas map. Next, we're gonna go down to settings. This is where you're gonna set your graphics and things like this. It's really nice that they added this to the launcher because it used to be that it would take you all the way into DCS and if you made graphical changes, it would actually have to close DCS, relaunch it. Whereas now we do it here at the launcher, we don't have to deal with reloading DCS. It hasn't even loaded yet. So this is pretty cool. I already set, you can set everything up here and then launch DCS. So now when it comes to graphics, my personal opinion here is that you should start by clicking low. If you're a new user, you've, you've never played DCS before, click low. From here, click apply, go back to home, click launch DCS, and see if you like how it looks. If you don't like how it looks, close DCS, come back in here and add a few things, right? I don't like the, the crazy jagged edges I've got. So I'm gonna turn on anti-aliasing and I'm gonna crank that up if my system can handle it. Now I'm gonna click apply and we're gonna try it again and see how that works. Okay, I, I like that, but I need to do some upscaling, right? So put on DLSS or something like that and then click apply and check it out. If you like it, great. If you don't add some more stuff until you start to see the frame rate start to drop, then I would go back and make some changes get it where you like it right once you've got it where your frame rate is acceptable to you and the graphics are as acceptable as they can be with your system specs like I can show you my system specs and I can show you the graphic settings that I use but it doesn't necessarily mean that that's gonna work for you you would have to have the exact same system specs as me in order to have the exact same sim behavior as me with the settings that I use right so my recommendation start with the lowest setting click on low and then slowly add settings and uh, level levels here until you're happy with it. All right, so once you've got your graphic settings the way you like, click on home and click launch DCS. All right, so me personally, I don't like the music, so I'm gonna go to settings and audio and click on music and drag that down. Click okay and we'll restart later. So once you've gotten to this point, you are ready to go. So I'm gonna go through the menu so you understand how all this works. Up at the top, you're gonna see your account name. You can log out of that right here. You can go into offline mode if you click on this. I wouldn't do that unless you're trying to troubleshoot something in multiplayer. Your module manager, this is gonna show you all the modules you've purchased, things like that. This is basically all the stuff that you have already in the launcher. So this is just remnants of how this used to be. This is how it used to be. When you would launch DCS, you didn't get a launcher. This is what you got. You went right into the sim and you had to handle all your modules here, your settings, your graphic settings here. You can see these are all the graphic settings that we already did in the launcher. And you can still do it here if you want. You can make changes here, click OK. The problem is, is if you click OK, you make any change here. Not all changes, but most changes here. Click OK, it's going to restart DCS. It's just easier to do it at the launcher side of things. It's my own personal opinion, but that's the way it is. So you've got these options here. You can go to uh, the settings card to go to your graphics. Click on controls and you've got your key binds. We'll go over key binds and how to set this up in a different video. Right now, we're just going to go through the UI. So we'll click cancel here. Over on the right, you've got your instant action. If you click on this, it's going to show you all the different missions you have for each of the aircraft you have loaded in DCS. Now, as a new user, this is really all you're going to see. Your SU-25T and the TF-51 Delta. And then over on the right, you're only going to have the two free maps that come with DCS. Create fast mission. If you click on this, you can actually set up a... Um, a full mission randomly by just filling out this form the way you like. You can go to advanced mode and get more options here. You can even pick where you want things to happen, things like that. Once you have it the way you like, you can click create, generate mission, and it'll create a randomized mission just based on the settings that you picked. From here, you can just fly it. Ran random mission, something no one else has created before. You can also click on mission. Inside here, you'll see all the missions you've created in the mission editor. And if you've downloaded something off of the forum, like my Operation Hidden C Scimitar mission, yeah, you can grab that, download it, install it where I've I've got a little installer like location where you're supposed to put it. Once you have it installed, you'll see it here and you can just double click on that mission and it'll, it'll launch it. 
If you click on campaign, this will be your purchased campaigns. So if you buy Red Flag or if you buy Weasels Over Syria, you'll see that listed here. You can select it, click OK, and you'll be able to fly that mission. We're going to skip multiplayer logbook. When you're logged into your pilot, you'll see the number of hours that you have flown in that aircraft. So zero hours, zero minutes, TF-51D, zero minutes. Um, but that's, that's all this is. And this will get cleared every time you reinstall DCS. So if you get a new PC and you download DCS, a fresh copy of it, and you log into your account, uh, that's not here anymore. I'm sure there's a way there's probably a Lua file somewhere that you can back up and load and it'll keep all that stuff in here. But in my experience, it I haven't really used this to really watch my time. If I load the F-16, it's going to show zero hours and zero minutes. And I've spent many, many hundreds of hours in the F-16 over the last few years. So yeah, but if you're just playing single player, you can keep track of that here. Encyclopedia. This will take you to the full air, ground, and sea encyclopedia. So here you can go through all the aircraft and click on each one and read about it, see what it looks like, helicopters, all the different types, what they are, how it works over on the right, the data. Basically, it's got your own little Nellis red flag petting zoo here. You can go through all of these so you can get familiarized with the different targets because you are going to have missions where it says you're going to be looking for an EWR site and you need to know what an EWR site is and what it looks like. So you can come in here and you can take a look at the different units and what they look like. You can scroll out, scroll in, to zoom, click and drag to move it around and look at it, things like that. Training. This is a great first stop for you brand new users. Click on the aircraft you want to learn and you have these training missions. So if you go to the SU-25T, aircraft startup, taxi and takeoff, is a good starting point. Click start and it'll load this mission. And what this does, it'll actually guide you through how to start this jet step by step. So we've got our briefing, we'll click fly. Welcome to the SU-25T Frogfoot. The Frogfoot, also called the Gratch, is a very capable ground attack aircraft that can destroy most anything on the battlefield. Before we start blowing things up, though, let's first learn how to start up this bird and taxi to the runway. The first thing I'll ask you to do is turn on the electrical power by pressing right shift and L. So press right shift L, and there we go. So that's how that works. Really cool. If you have a full fidelity aircraft, It'll actually have these squares that'll pop up over buttons and switches so that you know what they're talking about. In the SU-25T, we have no buttons and switches that we can actually click on. They're there, but they're not clickable, right? So a full fidelity aircraft will have clickable buttons and switches. And so as they're going through the startup procedure uh, tutorial, you'll see these little squares pop up over the button that they're talking about. So it's, it's really helpful, good way to get started. I'm gonna click quit and close. That's how you do the built-in training in DCS. We'll click cancel. Next, we can click on replay. So in here, you'll see all the saved replays that I've saved, missions that I've flown. Uh, in, these, in this case, these are actually multiplayer sessions that were automatically saved. And I can just double click on that and it'll actually replay the entire flight that I flew. And I, it's like a fully interactive debrief, basically. I can watch everything that I clicked uh, I can watch myself fight and fly, and it's pretty fun. This is actually how I make cinematics and tutorials. I'll click cancel. Mission editor. This could be a whole video series on how to use the mission editor, but basically this is where you can create your own mission. So we'll use the caucuses map. You can pick who you want to be a blue state, who you want to be a red state, and then click OK. From here, I can learn this aircraft this way. This is actually a good way to learn an aircraft. Throw it out there, throw a couple bad guys out there, uh, shoot them down to get used to the systems and things like that. Um, this is a good way. Uh, if you don't want to go through the training missions, if you don't like them, you can create your own. All right, I'm going to go ahead and exit this. No. All right. And then you have the campaign builder, which is the same thing, but you can create a full on campaign. And that's it for the menu. Down at the bottom, you've got your modules. If they're gray, they're not installed, haven't been purchased, whatever the case may be. If you have purchased it, you can click on it 
and you can click set wallpaper. Now, right now, this wallpaper is the Caucasus map wallpaper, but I can go over to the, let's see here. Let's go to the SE25 or the Marianas. Here we go. Click on Marianas and click set wallpaper. And now I've got the Marianas map as my wallpaper. But if you select something that you don't own, like I don't own the Mirage, then you don't have the wallpaper as an option. So you can only have wallpapers of modules that you own. And that's it. I hope this helps. Uh, this is just a quick overview of how to install DCS, get it up and running and how this whole thing works, this menu and the UI and everything. I'm going to be coming out with some other videos, uh, videos on how to set your key binds, how to get started with your first flight, things like that. So keep an eye out. I'll see you guys in the next one. Let's go. Yeah. Way up there. Flame out.